Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a naked face kind of like more natural makeup look. So I'm going to show you tips and tricks on how to get like really natural features, how to blur out, blur out, how to blend out your foundation so that it sits more like naturally on your face. So because this is a drugstore makeup look, I've chosen all my drugstore very affordable makeup to use today. So I'm very excited about this. So it's going to be very good so all of you guys can achieve it. So lots of goodies in this little tutorial today. So let's get to it, hun. So you guys always want to make sure that your skin is nice and cleansed and moisturized before you do your makeup because you want to have a smooth, even base without any flaky skin, you know, dirt, anything clogging up your pores. So I've already moisturized and cleansed my skin about a half an hour before doing this tutorial so it helps it get settled into the skin and do its thing. So for primer today I'm going to go in with my Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser just because I have quite oily skin I get a bit, you know, fairly big pores around these areas so I'm just going to cover those up and I just press it into my pore areas and you don't have to prime if you feel like a moisturizer is enough. So next I'm going to go in with foundation and I'm going in with my 24 hour wear combination oily Revlon color stay foundation what a mouthful. <laughs> so this is an oily skin like combination normal to oily skin foundation because I am combination oily. Like during the day I'll see like kind of like a greasiness, like a greasy mask kind of appear on my skin. Like I'll have patches of where the oils kind of made the foundation break up and kind of fade away. If you guys have combination normal to dry skin or just dry skin, you can get more of a satin finish foundation for normal skin types, which is like if you're a bit of oily, a bit of dry, kind of a bit of both. Or you can get a dewy foundation if you have more dry skin, so you're more on the dry skin side. You don't want a mattifying foundation sitting on your skin if you're dry skin because that stuff's just going to you know, cling to all your dry patches, hun. You don't want that. You want a nice dewy finish because your skin doesn't naturally create that dewy finish, whereas mine does and I don't want to have you know a dewy finish foundation sitting on my already oily skin. So that's why I'm going in with my Revlon foundation in the combination oily today. So you're going to want to grab your beauty blender. Oh, this is just a Chi Chi beauty sponge and I, what I do is I just dab bit of that product on my sponge and I'm just going to start applying it. Hold on a sec, where's my mirror? Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to start off with the center of the face. Do a little bit of like a sunscreen zinc kind of thing going on. So I start off with the center of my face because that's where most of the concealing like needs to be done is on the center. Sorry, I've got the sniffles today. And you're going to want to do dabbing motions on your skin. So you want to kind of pounce the beauty blender or beauty sponge. Just pounce it on your face. Just in the center. And I'll tell you what we do when we work out towards the edges. So just focus on building up that product on the center of your face first. I like to just kind of run it a bit over my eyes as well. Just a thin layer. Whatever's left on the sponge basically. And also over my brows. I always like to put some product through my brows because it helps the brow powder or whatever I'm using to fill in my brows. It kind of helps the product to stick and last longer I find. So I like to put a bit of product through there to kind of prime my brows, I guess we could say. So I'm going for more of like a medium coverage. If you guys want a full coverage, then you can choose a full coverage foundation or build up your medium coverage foundation if you want. So once you've built up the center of your face, when you get to the more outer skirts, the outer edges of your face near your hairline, you want to start rolling the sponge. Kind of rolling the product into your hairline so it's not so harsh and it, more, it fades in to your hairline. Kind of feathering it in I guess we could say. So when you get to the right outer skirts, it's just feathering it into your hairline. So roll the sponge. So what you want to always do is make sure that you bring your foundation onto your ears as well. Because honey, we do not want that sexy red ear going on. You want to make sure that your ear is the same color as your skin because some people can get quite red ears and if you've just got foundation sitting up to here it's very obvious that you have foundation on when you have a red ear contrasting against your natural skin to your foundation skin tone and you also want to make sure you bring your foundation down your neck as well not too far you have to bring it all the way down to your chest just about halfway down so you're feathering it down your neck because it is quite obvious when you've only brought your foundation up to where your jawline is because some people can have a different coloured neck to their face. I just use whatever's left on the back of my hand and just bring it down so I'm not wasting any product. 
Voila, there we go, foundation done. So once we've done our foundation, we're going to move on to concealer and I'm using my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the shade Medium Moyen. And I'm going to place this just around my eyes to begin off with and make sure to hit that inner corner because a lot of us can get quite purple tones around that area. So you basically want to focus most of the product on the inner part of your eye and then just kind of feather out the rest of the product out towards the edge of your eye. Then I'm just going to grab my beauty blender and blend it out, making sure not to disturb the concealer. You just want to kind of push it into the skin. You don't want to swipe it. Then on any trouble areas like any acne scars or spots that I have on my face, I'm just going to place some of that concealer on there. So next you want to grab a little buffer brush. I'm just going to go in with my Deluxe Crease Brush from Real Techniques. And I like this brush because the bristles are kind of like, they're just nice to just blend out the edge of that, edges of that concealer really like softly and just kind of feathers out the product without disturbing the concealer sitting on top of that breakout or that scar or that blemish, what we're trying to cover up. You want to make sure that the concealer that you've used to cover up this ble the blemish or breakout is the same tone as your skin tone. You don't want something too light sitting on top of that breakout because it's just going to highlight it. To set this bad boy in place, I'm going to go in with my Fit Me Press Powder in 135. So what I like to do is I grab a sponge with like a flat edge to it, so it's got a flat side. So I'm just kind of wiggling it around to cover that whole flat side in product. Then what I like to do is I press it into the skin, not necessarily baking, I'm just like setting that concealer in place. And I also do this all over my face as well where I feel like I need to, you know, set the foundation in place. And I like to bring it down next to my nose. Like I said, I set the places where I feel like it'll move or cake up. And just by pressing this product into the skin, it's like a light bake, I guess. So we're not leaving any excess. We're just pressing that pr pressed powder into the skin. And like I said, I just kind of press whatever's left on the sponge into the places where I feel I feel like I need it and just by doing this step I found my foundation has lasted so much longer than what it would have if I've just you know dusted a bit of translucent powder onto my skin so usually what I go and do is I just use a setting spray I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray I know this isn't drugstore it's the only product today that I'm using that's not drugstore if you guys have a drugstore setting spray then by all means use that. I just don't have a drugstore spray, like setting spray with me. And this one literally is incredible. Like if you guys wanted to splurge your, you know, your uh, money on something, this. This all nighter one literally keeps my makeup on all day and it stops that powdery looking mess. So I use this a couple times during this routine. So I'm going to use it now just to set this in place. Fan it in, fan that shiznit in. And I do it again at the end of my routine, but I just like to do it in between to really just lock what I've just done in place. So now for the brows, I've already primed them, like I said, with a bit of that foundation to help the product cling to something. So I'm going to go in with my Master Brow Pro Palette by Maybelline in the shade Deep Brown. So I'm just going to zoom you guys in really quickly just to show you this part of my brow routine. So what I like to do is I grab a little angled brush. This is just from... Um, eBay and I just like to use that middle deep brown shade from that brow palette and all I do is I just press the sides of the bristles the angle part angling towards the inner part of my brow I just place that against where my natural hairs start to grow and I flick it up place it down flick it up and I start where most of the hair is where the deepest color pigmentation in my natural brows is and then see how it gets more sparse here I just use whatever's left on the brush, I haven't dipped it back in, I just kept what's on the brush. I just flick it up again, pressing it and flicking up till I get to the head of the brow. See that line I just created and it just tapers in, the darkest part here is here where most of the product was. And then the lightest part is here where the kind of just tapers in. You always want to make sure that the head of your brow is lighter than the tail of your brow because that's how a brow naturally kind of looks. Man, I haven't done my brows on camera for yonks. Like, it has been a hot minute. It's so funny, like, I actually have to be careful in where my head placement is. 
so you guys can actually see. I actually didn't realise how long it's been since I've done my brows. Like, I think I might update my brow routine. If you guys are interested, make sure to leave a comment down below. And I'll film my brow routine if you want to see it. Because I have changed it up since the beginning or since I last filmed it. And make sure when you're doing your brows, just do little, little feather strokes. So I don't just do a line. You want to make sure you're doing little feather strokes to kind of imitate the natural hair growth in your brows. So these are the brows. So some of you might be like, whoa, girl, those are not natural brows. But to me, this is how I like to fill up my brows. I give them shape. I give them, you know, fill them in a little bit. You guys can do less extravagant if you want to. You can just do a tinted brow gel. That's what I use sometimes. But this is what I'm going with today. <laughs> And to tame these brows and set the little hairs in place so that they're not flying away and going out of the lines during the day, I'm going to go in with my Rimmel Brow This Way Brow Sculpting Gel in the shade Deep Brown, I believe, or Dark Brown. So once I've got our brows set in place, we're going to move on to the face contouring, I believe. Do you want to do face contouring? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is bronze and contour my face using the same palette. I'm using my NYX Contour and Highlight Kit and I'm going in with the shade Tan. And what I'm going to do is just kind of like make a fish face. And I'm just going to follow that natural kind of contour of my face and kind of bring it up the side of my temples. And I'm using light tapping motions. And I'm also going to hit my temples real quick. So basically we're just bronzing wherever the sun would naturally hit. Get a bit of a glow. Mm. I want to kind of like hit right under my lip a little bit. Just to kind of give a bit more of a pouted look. And also just under the chin. So it like it kind of looks like your beard at the beginning, but you gotta blend it out. So it makes your chin look a little bit shorter. And it kind of just feels like it kind of bronzes it up a little bit. I just kind of drag it out towards my jawline. So once it bronzes up the skin and give a bit of like a healthy glow, I am going to keep on giving it a bit more of a bronze because I do want like, luminous feel, especially because I have such like a mattifying base. I want to give a bit of luminosity back to my skin. But, but before we do that, I'm going to contour. So what I'm going to do is grab the sculpt shade from my NYX Contour and Highlight Kit. I'm going to grab a fan brush and just kind of start contouring out my cheekbones. You know what I mean? And when contouring, you want to go from the point of your ear to the corner of your mouth. So you want to keep it on that angle, okay? And I just kind of bring it all the way to here. I don't bring it all the way to the corner of my mouth because that will be a deep contour. You want to make sure you just keep it on more on the natural side. All this natural makeup look. The sculpt to the face. I swear, contouring is actually my favourite thing. Oh, that and highlighting. I love highlighting. So because I am more of a glossy, kind of oily skin girl... I don't want to have too much luminosity on the skin because I kind of get that generated with my skin during the day anyway. I get a bit of like a luminous kind of sheen to my skin. But I do still want a bit of, you know, a bit of a glow. So I'm going to grab my Wild and Radiant Illuminating Bronzing Palette. And I'm just going to mix all four shades just because I feel like it. And I'm just going to kind of place that just above the bronzer. So where we've placed the bronzer down just a bit higher so it has a bit of the high points of the face. Just to give a bit of a glow. If you guys do have like breakouts and things, you can feel free to skip this step, step because um, creating a luminous glow will highlight your breakouts or your acne scars or, you know, any texture in your skin. But I just want, I have a little bit of texture but it's just not really phasing me that much. Like I don't really mind. I have a little touch on my nose, just a touch. Just to give it a bit of like a bronzy glow. I forgot to like kind of contour the bottom of my nose, so just just give me a sec. So what I like to do is with like a bit of the contour powder, the sculpt shade, I just kind of like get, do a bit of like a C shape under my nose like that, and this just gives the appearance of like a shorter nose, a bit more like a, like um what do you call it like a little pointed nose, one of those little. Like lifted kind of noses so the highlights gonna lift the nose but the contour shades gonna shorten it and I'm just gonna give a bit of shape to the sides of my nose too since I'm at it you know why not and then I just get my beauty blender and just kind of pounce it a little bit to 
kind of help it melt into the skin look a little less like powder and look more like shadows so we do have a little radiance glow going but I do still want to give a bit more of that JLo glow a bit more of a glow to the face so I'm going to go in with my Mary Lou by The Balm it's only about $20 I believe if that I'll link it everything that I've used down below in the description bar for you know if you guys want to check it out or anything like that but I know this isn't a very expensive highlighter so I do love using this especially for drugstore looks and all I'm doing is just placing it on the high points of the face and just look at that glow girl like oh oh I'll be reflecting the sun I'm just gonna place some of that on my brow bone as well and I want to give a bit of like a brow bone highlight to kind of give that part of the face a bit of like a pull forward so if you're highlighting any place that you do end up highlighting that is going to bring that feature forward and if you contour or put shadow somewhere it's going to pull that feature back so when you're doing contouring and highlighting you're kind of playing with the dimensions of your face I like to put it on the bottom part of my lip too guys to emphasize the pouted feel so I've shadowed here and now I'm just kind of bringing this part forward you'll make sure you just hit in the high points you don't want it all over the cheek so just hit the high points otherwise you lose that effect and it just becomes like a a mess and I just touch just touch above the brow you guys can do your chin if you want I don't like to do my chin because that's where my most troublesome area is so I just leave that part blank and I just want to kind of put a bit of that highlight on the inner corner because when we are tired and you know haven't had enough sleep or even just you know we're going to work in the morning whatever you may be doing you want to put a bit of highlight on the inner corners do you see how it opens up the eyes so much more I drag it a little bit down on the bottom lash line area too to give it that open kind of more wide awake look and I do like to place a bit of that glow on my decolleté so I'm just placing some of Mary Lou on my collarbones shoulders move that strap over and just hitting these areas will help just kind of give a bit of more attraction to it so you do look more glowy and more healthy so what you guys can do is we can add a bit of that bronzer shade from the NYX palette we used before to kind of bronze up our skin I'm going to place some in the crease and I'm literally just whacking this baby no rhyme or reason to it I'm just placing this on the outer crease area and outer V just to give a bit of dimension to the eye I guess and again on the other eye just placing it on the outer crease and V you know what I mean and there you have a bit of dimension to the eye and I mean if you want to go like full force with this look like oh yeah baby we can take that wild and radiant palette again and I'm just going to dip into this shade here on the same brush and all I'm doing is just placing this on the very outer um, eyelid area and just kind of using the side bristles with no product on it just kind of like blending that out a little bit don't put any of this in the crease just the outer part of the eye and I use little circular motions just to kind of buff it in as I place it on so it's like blending as I go and they've got like a bronzy eye as well so it's so easy to achieve like nothing intense I literally have no rhyme or reason with this look I'm just kind of adding what I did on the face onto the eyes like it's so simple but so effective and same brush wipe it off we're just going to take some of Mary Lou again kind of like just kind of help that blend into that brown that we've just done and just having that shadow on the outer corner and lighter shade on the inner corner it's going to create a more almond shaped eye so it's more sexy more lifted everything like that because we've had the shadow up here so it's going to lift the eyes it's just heavenly just heavenly so now for mascara I'm going in with my mega plush volume express mascara from Maybelline and all you're gonna do for now is just pop it on just pop on a nice thick coat of mascara and I'll show you a little trick in a second so as you can see here I've got a lot of clumping in my lashes and it's not something that I like to have you know when I'm putting on mascara or anything so a little hack that I like to do is I just grab a little spoolie brush like this right here and all I do is I just wiggle and sweep through the lashes with this spoolie 
and it's just going to separate the lashes. It's not taking any of the product away. It's still nice and dark and pigmented. I'm just wiggling and sweeping through my lashes to kind of break them up and separate them. And do you just see the difference? Like, can you see the difference? Especially if you don't have a lot of lashes, you want them to be separated and, you know, black. You don't want them to be clumped together. And I'm just going to place some bottom lash mascara on real quick. So another little trick to make your lashes look really full and really like healthy and like stand out on the face is to take a black coal liner and to take a gel liner. I'm just taking this um, gel liner from Face of Australia and what I'm doing is I'm just going to dip the pencil into the gel liner to cover the tip of the pencil and you're just going to run this through your tight line. And you just see the difference it makes. It makes your lash line look so much more fuller. And to make your eyes on the bottom look more awake and fresh, I'm going to go in with a nude coal liner. This is from the Models Prefer. And you just see the difference it makes from having that nude in the waterline compared to nothing. So guys, this next part is optional. If you guys aren't comfortable putting on lashes or you don't feel like you want to wear lashes, like I literally am loving like natural lashes right now like I love it but I just want a bit of something extra so I'm going to go in with these Demi Wispies in black these are super affordable they are great drugstore lashes and because they have such a thin band they are perfect to wear like without liner or anything like that so this is what it looks like with the lashes applied for blush I'm gonna grab my 9N Morphe palette and grab this peachy corally shade from the kit and all I'm doing is just adding this blush to the contours of my face. And then once you've got the blush applied to your face, we're going to grab the setting spray. I'm going to use my Urban Decay one again. And it just helps lock all that makeup in place so that it won't move throughout the day. To finish off this whole makeup look, I'm going to go and do my lips. And today I'm thinking of a nude kind of pinky... Yeah, nudie pink lip today, I think. I think that's what I'm feeling. So I'm going to go in with my Rimmel Natural Lip Liner in the number 049 and place this, just like outline my lips, kind of fill them in a little bit. And this is just going to help prolong the wear of my lipstick. Next, I'm going to go in with my Rimmel 206 Nude Pink Lipstick. It's a gorgeous, like, satin finish, pinky, nudie lip. And this is the completed makeup look, guys. Get that pose going. Pose. Pose, 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 pose. I hope you guys enjoyed today's makeup look. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you did and subscribe down below for me so you guys can join my YouTube fam. If you guys did enjoy this, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you do want to see me do that brow tutorial or, you know, any other tutorials that you'd like me to do, feel free to let me know. I love you guys so much and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, guys.